Hello and good afternoon, fellow students and professor. Today my persuasive discussion is going to be about Richmond, Virginia. Not just about the city of Richmond, Virginia, but a topic that's been on everybody's minds of lately. The topic, actually, is the ballpark in Shaco Bottom. This topic has been on the discussion of many Richmonders for the last two and a half years so far. And the reason that it's been a, been a topic is because there seems to be somewhat of a disbursement with what should be done and what shouldn't be done. We have those in the county who feel that the ballpark should be designed, should probably get upgrades, but who also feel that they're the ones actually utilizing the ballpark that the Richmond Squirrels actually play in. Then you have members of the city, Richmond City, Shaco Bottom, those of you who are familiar with the Canal area, um, Carytown, who feel that, hey, a uh, ballpark in Cary would be an all downtown Carytown near Shaco Bottom would be an awesome idea. But what's also happening is that there is a revenue situation building up from this. In three separate incidents, uh, not incidents, I'll say, in three separate situations, Richmond Times Dispatch, as well as other RVA magazines, have talked about the differences in doing this process, in building a new ballpark. One point that was made was that, where would the money come from? Are you taxing, building more, ta building more taxes to build up this ballpark and bring it here and produce it, create it to what it needs to be? How are you going to fund it? The second one is, if you should build this ballpark, who are you building the ballpark for? Are you building the ballpark for those diehard baseball fans who love their baseball, as myself, who love their baseball, who love their AAA, who love their major league, who would follow around and come to see and enjoy these, these teams and enjoy these young players trying to make it to the big leagues? Or is it more of a way to make Richmond look better? To make Richmond look like the other cities who have stadiums and big sports sites to be seen by visitors and fans and friends and everyone. That's a big question that's being asked. The third big question that's being asked is, what is the point of doing all of this construction and rebuilding and recreating if, in fact, no one cares? Meaning, look at the past few years. Richmond, the city of Richmond itself, has gone through many sports programs here, minor league and international league. We've had the Richmond Squirrels, who are still here, a long, who are still here, hopefully a long-standing team. We've had the Richmond Braves, who were here. I love the Richmond Braves when they here. Went to many of the games. We had the Richmond River Dogs, our hockey team, who we had for so long, and they're not here anymore. We had the Richmond Capitals, who are gone now. We have the Richmond Kickers, who are still holding on as our soccer team. We had an Arena League team who folded who folded last year after making the playoffs for eight seasons. We've had international, a lot of people don't realize we had an international basketball team. Yes, uh, what you would call a minor league basketball team or two who won the championship in their second year, who played at the Richmond Coliseum, who are now gone. The problem that I'm looking at with this situation is I, for one, would love for the city of Richmond to be able to produce and have these amazing things, to be able to say, hey, let's be like the other big cities. Let's be like Charlotte and let's be like New York and let's be like New Jersey and let's be like Norfolk and let's be like Virginia Beach. Have big, awesome venues that people would love to see. Let's have sports and things coming all over the place. But here's the problem. Richmond doesn't have the capability and understanding to do that. We've made mistakes in so many places. For instance, even though I'm a diehard sports fan, the Redskins training facility. We owe half a million dollars every year to the Redskins organization for coming here. This is going to shock a lot of people. I'm a diehard Redskins fan since I was the age of six years old. But hey, who was sitting at the table with our governor when he signed, sorry, with our mayor when he signed this contract? We're not making any money off of it. The local vendors, the local stores, the local mom and pop shops, they're not even allowed to have their restaurants in there and their goods sold there. 
all the money that's being sold is certain places. Yeah, you got a couple of the local spots inside, maybe three or four. But what are those four spots doing? They have to get their 40% and then the 60% that goes to the city. But how much is that helping to cover the cost of the, the Redskins training camp? That's the big picture. With the, all these situations like the baseball stadium in Shaco Bottom or the Redskins training camp or how to revitalize the Richmond Coliseum as a big sports venue, the problem is simple. As a city, we have to realize how to spend money and how to attract so that we can create more. And to create more, we need to understand what it is we are creating, what it is we are building, and what it is we are selling. And that is the big picture. When you are trying to turn your city into a sports city, you have to first love sports. Second of all, understand what sports your city loves. And two, three, realize how to really spread that out and make it understood by your citizens so that when you're spending money on these things, they understand. That's something we have to do. And I feel like that's something that Richmond is not doing. And once they figure that process out, we will be able to be a sports city and create venues for these teams we love. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good evening.